Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today we are making a Red Barn tissue box holder. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video and I apologize, but um, it was a lot of work um, to get it in. So cut these longer planks that you get from Dollar Tree and then I've got two shorter ones. Those I cut from longer the longer planks. And then I've got these little barns. I took um, I took that one piece off there. Um, and my original thought was I'd just stick it on the other side, but I'd have to reverse it. And then once I realized it, once I took it off, I realized that it was nothing but like a flimsy piece of cardboard. So I didn't end up using it for anything other than a template to clean up my lines after I painted. I went through, sanded all the rough edges, sanded, you know, the top of the barn where I took the, the piece of cardboard off. And with the, with the wood um, planks, I glued them together to uh, make a little bit longer piece. I used a little bit of wood glue. Um, sorry, you'll find that <laughs> you'll find that I had a little bit of a struggle with the the glue. Oh wait, no, I cut all that out. <laughs> my glue is for my wood glue is forever getting um, clogged, so it becomes an issue trying to get it. Uh, out of the bottle so put a little bit of glue use some tape to make sure to hold it together while it was setting did that with both of the planks and then proceeded to start painting after that So I started out um, painting using the uh, elephant chalk paint from Waverly. I did this on both sides of both of the little barns. And this was my base color. I didn't show you, I, I didn't leave the footage in there of me painting all of the, the sides and everything. You didn't need to see all that. And I guess uh, whatever I was watching ended, so I'm trying to navigate <laughs> and find something else while I'm painting. Perfect example of I can't do two things at one time. I can't work the remote and, and paint with the brush. It just doesn't work. I tried. So I get, um, I've got this almost down, that color. Now, I didn't think I showed, I guess I showed this one. I thought I had just painted the one and cut out all the other. Sorry guys, it's just been one of those weeks. <laughs> this project took me longer than I intended it to, but it came out really, really cute. I really, really love it. As you can see, I also painted those planks. Um, I did those on both sides as well. 
using the same uh, Waverly chalk paint uh, elephant color. Just put a in, and all of this only took one coat on each side. I wasn't too worried about getting perfect coverage because um, I'm layering different paints on here, so I wasn't like. I wasn't concerned about getting perfect coverage and I didn't think I showed painting all this painting thought I cut all this out I am so sorry y'all at least I had the decency to speed it up so it didn't take forever but this is uh, part of what I was doing um, during our snow days and and cold snap there I was working on trying to get this done um, and then I ended up the following week going back to work which was last week so then I was only able to do a little bit here and there in the evenings so here I took the Waverly white chalk paint and I dry brushed each of these pieces on both sides Because when this is assembled, you will see um, at least some of each side of the thing. So I just wanted to make sure that I had it complete and uh, finished. So here I'm taking and I'm doing the crackle method with this. So I'm taking some spool glue and painting it on there. And I did this with all of the pieces as well. You want a nice even coat and depending on how much crackle you want on there will depend on how much glue you lay down. And then I took the Crimson by Waverly and went over the top of that glue. And I deliberately skipped doing around the top because I'm painting that um, I'll be painting that later so I didn't want the crackle and the red on that one and I don't know why I painted it gray because I went back and painted it white so I don't know I wasn't thinking but see I've got a nice crackle on there that makes it look old and weathered <clears throat> so here's where I'm going in um, with the white and doing around the top of the barn and I'm I'm really not great at um, painting and getting perfect lines in there as you'll see as I'm going along and I don't know why I didn't think before I did this part to use that um, that piece that I took off as a template I did use it later to go back and clean up my lines but I could have saved myself that step if I had thought to use it as a template and draw it in. Um, I can follow those lines better than I can just painting and trying to hit where I think the lines should be. I did that white paint on both sides of both of the barns. All around the, the top there and I left the chimney gray <coughs> oh, pardon me and here I'm using some popsicle sticks and working on trying to get the door the barn door configured <laughs> so to speak and this this was kind of a, a little bit of a tedious process trying to get everything lined up just right as you'll see as I go along um, I use the those I love those miter shears they cut right through the popsicle sticks with a nice with a almost nice clean cut I have to sand a little bit but not a lot I just sanded the where I cut to make sure it was nice and smooth here I am taking and marking off where I need to cut the cross beam for the door this part was 
wasn't too tedious. It's the the inner part of the door, the the X in the, the middle part of the door that proved to be a little bit of a challenge and a little tedious. As you'll see in a moment. I realized that somehow or another I didn't quite get those cut evenly, despite the fact that I marked them off and cut. So I just went back and trimmed off that last little bit that needed to be trimmed off of there. This is the kind of crafting that, that I really like to do, um, where I'm actually, you know, taking and building stuff, building something or creating something almost from scratch. Obviously the barns were already, you know, I had bought those pre-made, but it's still, you know, I, I don't mind taking, um, you know, like Dollar Tree items or other items that I find and converting them and, and doing them up, you know, and, and decorating them a little bit better than what I purchased them as. But this is where, um, this is the kind of crafting that I really like to do where I'm taking a, a, a complete concept um, and using different pieces to, to bring it together. Granted, it makes for a little bit longer video, takes a little bit longer to get it done, but I, I just, um, I really love being able to fully create something and bring it to life from different pieces that, you know, I've got. So here I'm working on the, the other cross beam there, trying to get the those little pieces cut just right. And I, I just go in and, and try to line them up the best I can and mark them. Somewhere in here I realized that that full cross, uh, cross piece that I did didn't line up just right. I didn't like the way it lined up. So I just kind of, I ended up doing, um, just doing another one and, and doing the point for the, that goes into the corner. And then after I glued the other pieces down, it was easier to mark it because I wasn't chasing the other uh, door frame pieces around as I was trying to uh, lay it down there and mark it. So now that I have it all pretty much figured out, I go in and paint them before I lay them on the barn, for, um, before I glue them down. If you enjoy the projects that we bring uh, to you, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, comment. I love to hear your feedback um, on, and what you think um, about the projects that we're making. And I know that there are some of the videos where some of the things that, that I'm creating, um, there might be an easier way to go about it. If you have a suggestion for an easier way to accomplish something, leave that in the comments below too. We love to hear your feedback. So here I am getting everything in position to, to glue the barn door down. And I laid those, uh, glued the main frame down first. I was trying to make sure I had everything lined up right. I almost started with the top piece and then I was like, oh, wait a minute, now I need to start with the bottom so I make sure that it's lined up on the, the bottom um, edge of it. And 
as you can see I'm just kind of trying to get it lined up just right get that piece in place and then get the two smaller pieces in place once I get those in place then I can work on perfecting the cut on the other one had a little bit of glue gooping out there had to clean it up a little bit I am running way late in getting this video done and posted I was aiming for six o'clock central time for getting it um, uploaded but it is now 610 and I'm doing the voiceover story of my life right trying to sand that down a little bit to make sure it fits in there just right and get that marked and start cutting once I get it um, once I get it cut down where I need it I can glue it in place and then start to work on the the loft um, frame <clears throat> And here you can see that um, now I'm trying to work out the sizing and how I want to do the, the little loft up there. Just cutting those down and in there I realized that I had those pieces longer so I had to adjust them again. I needed to make it a little bit shorter. And of course, all of this is the tedious part, trying to get all the, the little uh, details worked out. Here is where I realized that I was trying to do those a little too long because I didn't want my loft sitting, my, my loft frame sitting right on top of my door frame. So I went back in and cut that down just a little bit shorter. Cut each of those down just a little bit shorter so that I could, so it looked a little more proportionate and it wasn't looking like it was sitting right on top of the um, the door frame. We would love it if you'd follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and we have a social page on our website as well um, for sharing crafting tips, projects, um, all that good crafting stuff. 
So we invite you to um, join us there as well. I'll leave all the links for all of those in our description box so that you can jump over and follow us and interact with us on other social media. All right, so now I'm working on doing a loft, um, a loft frame um, for the other side, the other end of the barn. I kind of did that one a little bit opposite. I made it longer and closer to, um, not as wide, narrower. That's the word I'm looking for. Y'all, today, technology has not been my friend. That's part of the reason I'm running late. Words are not my friend. I don't have the words today, so bear with me. We've got a really kind of cold and wet day um, today. So I'm happy to just stay inside and do all of this anyway. Let me know where you guys are from and what kind of weather you're having. Hopefully we dry up a little bit here pretty soon. We went from ice and snow and below freezing temperatures. And we actually had a day or two that were in the negative the week before last. And then all this last week, we've had a ton of rain. Um, we started out the winter season. I live out in a community. We have um, like little lakes and ponds out here. And the water level was really low um, at the beginning of the winter season. But these last two weeks has the water level up to the very edges of the banks to where too much more rain and it's going to start overflowing. Um, our big lake has an area <clears throat> that flows over the road um, right before a little bridge where we go over um, and it feeds one of the smaller lakes. So um, that one at least won't get up to flooding um, where it floods into people's yards. But some of the small, the other smaller ones um, are right up at the very top of the, the bank there. So let's hope we dry out a little bit. So here I'm working on doing, um, I've got the Waverly uh, Antique Wax and I'm dry brushing the, all the white um, on each of the barns. And I believe I also did the dry brush on the, the other pieces that I still need to add to it. I, I thought I did it all at one time. Yeah, I did. There we go. I'm doing the, around the, the roofing and everything. Um, just, you know, there's just something about an old weathered barn. It's got so much character and Every time I pass, <clears throat> I live out in a um, farming community. <clears throat> Pardon me. And every time I pass, you know, any of these old barns and stuff, I just, I just kind of try to imagine the stories they could tell, you know, because you know they've been standing for forever. Um, you know, a lot of these barns around my area have been up for a very, very long time and, and they're weathered and some of them are kind of falling apart, but it just adds character and just makes you wonder about the stories behind them. So, all right, here's where I had taken and used that piece that I took off as a template and I went in with a pencil and kind of traced where the line should be and I'm going in with the elephant gray. I started out with the red thinking, you know, it would pass, but it wasn't, it wasn't working. I needed to at the very least do the elephant gray and then put the red on there. So that's what I'm doing. 
I'm just kind of filling in those areas where and cleaning it up a little bit where it looks where it looks like an um, an adult instead of a kindergartner painted it. <laughs> I do have my moments of uh, kindergarten painting, but usually find a way to go in and make it a lo look a little bit more professional there. After I got the gray in there, I went back over it with the red so that it matched a little bit better. Even though it's chalk paint, um, the red over the white, because I'm, I'm kind of covering up where some of that white oh, you know, came over the, the edges of where it should have been. So the red over the white kind of looked, it, there was a color in the diff, or a difference in the color. See, words y'all, I, I just don't have them today. Um, so I went back over it with the, the red after I did the elephant gray. Here's where I'm putting the, actually putting the windows on the, or the, well, windows, loft, frame, whatever you want to call it on there. I'm putting it on both uh, both of the barns. Evidently, I'm having a little bit of a struggle with, with my fingers as well, trying to get that. <laughs> hey, you know, all of us crafters, we have our struggles. You don't always see them in the videos, but we do have them. Sometimes I show them, sometimes I don't. So here's the, uh, the one on the other side, and I made it um, a little longer and narrower. And here's where I got smart and decided it was probably easier to lay the glue on the barn and then put that down rather than trying to glue on the the popsicle stick and finagle it around. Since I was uh, having a case of butterfingers there, I'm surprised I didn't drop one of them with glue on it and have to pry it up. At least there's one win there, right? So I thought it would be cute to have um, a little piggy on that side and that kind of helps fill up that space um, I'm I'm still feeling like you know it's I've got the project completed I'm still feeling like it's missing a little something um, I might go back in on this on the pig and do a little bit of stitching around it just to kind of help bring it out a little bit and give it some dimension. Um, I guess I, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Kelly Barlow videos and she, she keeps saying she's determined to convert all of us into stitchers. I think she's about got me con uh, converted there. And here I'm just uh, hitting the chimney on this, this one. This is the one that ha I left that piece on there. So I had to go through, go over and, and paint it. Alright, so 
talk about oopsies, okay? I had taken and glued these side pieces on and I glued it flush with the, the front of each of the barn pieces and then realized that it was too short for the Kleenex box. So I had to pry it apart and start over again. So this time I got smart and got the tissue box and kind of put it in there so that I could make sure that I had it glued where it would fit the tissue box because that's the whole point, right? It's a tissue box holder. If it doesn't fit the tissue box, then, you know, it's not serving the purpose it's intended for. Live and learn. Um, I don't know why I thought that those side pieces were the proper length to just, you know, put them flush on there. I have no idea. But anyway, I fixed it. I roughed up the, the end of one of them, but it doesn't show because I glued it back on there, you know, a little bit further back and you can't see it. So it's no big deal. Here I've got it lined up. And voila, but we're not done yet. We still need a roof. So I struggled with that part because I was looking at those barns and the tissue box there and thinking that they're a little bit too tall. So I first started out trying to make something that would go across the bot, you know, the top of the tissue box. And then I didn't like it. And I was like, no, that's not going to look right. The barn needs to be finished. It needs to have a roof. So I just kind of went through and, and played around with it a little bit and realized that the tissues stick up far enough out of the, the tissue box and, and that this was fine. Now in hindsight, I'm thinking I could have done this for one of the little square tissue boxes and I might do one for those too if I can find two more of these barn plaques. Um, because I think that would be cute too because not everybody uses the the longer tissue boxes a lot of you know people grab the square ones um it's actually a lot of people like to use i like the the puffs plus um with lotion in them and i could not find any of those at the store in the longer tissue boxes they're only in the square at least where i was shopping so I will probably, if I can find two more of these little barns, I will probably do another one for the, um, the square tissue boxes. I think that would be cute too. So I'm painting the, the roof here or the roof line so that it matches when I put the, the roof together. And I'm sticking with that same elephant, um, gray from Waverly. As you can see, I've got a couple of, um, off to the side there, I've got the jumbo popsicle sticks that are, um, held together with two of the smaller, or two pieces of the smaller popsicle sticks. These are going to be the planks for our, our roof. I determined that each of the sections on the roof, um, would hold, uh, would fit two of those um, except for the section where the chimney is and that one only does one but it gives me an opening for the tissue to pop out of where I didn't have to cut openings so there's uh, a plus side to that I'm painting the these with elephant gray as well and then I, <clears throat> I'll go in and distress them and weather them a bit.
do the edges around all of them too. So remember earlier I said that the technology is not help is not cooperating with me. Well, it stopped recording this section of it, so I'm doing it all over again. Here I'm dry brushing with some Waverly white to create that um, old weathered look like the sun and the weather has kind of bleached the, the roof out a bit. And then <clears throat> now comes the fun part, assembling it. Get the roof on, line it up there and, and once I figure out exactly where I want to get it and put it and line it up with the bottom edge of the the frame of the roof. Put a little bit of hot glue on each end and get it set up there. And then I gotta go in with the other one, other side and put it on hot glue over there. Today has not been my day with technology, let me tell you. I had aimed to have this uploaded by 6 o'clock and it is 7.05. <laughs> technology has been torturing me today. So here, um, getting that other section put on there, lined up with the, the first. And then I'll flip it around. Do the same thing on the other side and then I'll put the, the single one in there. Just a couple dabs of hot glue. Get it lined up just right. And see, I did plenty of talking before, and now I'm at a loss for words because I'm flustered over the technology issue. So here we go. We've got all of our roof assembled, and you can see there's like a little slat in there. And that's where you can pull the tissue up out of, as you will see in just a moment. Voila! We have a completed tissue box holder with the barn. I think it's absolutely adorable. Thanks so much for watching and we appreciate your support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. When you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notified each time we upload new content.